Vulcan? For God's sake, smoke that bloody thing like a man. Stop puffing at it like a ruddy debutant. Go on, laddies, smoke it, smoke it. Draw it in, draw it in. <laughs> <laughs> Am I coarse, Simpson? Am I, Charlie? Away you go, lads. You're no so bad. You can have a drink. Oh, for Pete's sake, then. Where's my whiskey? Come on. Colonel's whiskey. Lieutenant Colonel Jock Bloody Sinclair, DSOA man. He's a terror, that's what he is. He's a great man. Look, he's a terror, I'm telling you. Is that right? He used to be a piper. He played peebrooks in the wireless. Uh, well, I'm no corporal. I never get to hear the wireless. Is that right? The surgeons are going to get the TV. Are you not drinking? I'll be back in a wee while. Is it a rendezvous you have, Corporal Fraser? You'll not get the TV that way. I'm telling you. It's no good. They're settling in. Can you not get away? You know what your father's like. I'll be piping all night. Will I wait? Oh, no, you can't wait here. Was it all right about last night? No bother. He was in late himself. Are you angry I came? Morgan, not scared of him. Let me tell him. I'll speak to him straight. He's, he's got to know sooner or later. It's not right like this. You're hot. Oh, listen to what I'm saying. Look, Ian, he'll not take it, not yet. I'll speak to him when the moment comes. I've got to go now. Tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Miss Sinclair. Yes? Oh, it's you, Pipe Major. Miss Sinclair, a barracks is a very small place. It's not the first time you've been inside at night, I know that, but if your father found out, there might be bad trouble for you. You've no right to speak to me like that, have you? Well, I'm only trying... It's nothing to do with you, is it? I'm speaking to you as a friend, Miss Sinclair. I didn't mean to interfere. And I didn't mean to be rude. Sorry, Pipey. Good night. Good night. Gentlemen, I have news for you. All of you! You ignorant men. News that will affect you all. Tomorrow, there's a new colonel coming, and he'll be taking over the battalion. Are you receiving me loud and clear? No, Jock, you're pulling out there. It's true what I'm telling you. Ask the adjutant there. Jimmy knows right enough. It's true. It doesn't surprise me. They were bound to catch up with him sometime. I didn't call for comments one way or the other. It's just a fact. Who is it, Chuck? Uh, Basil Barrow. Oh, Major Barrow? I remember him. He lectured at Sandhurst. Oh, he's a stick to the detail, a marvelous lecturer. He was out east. He's an expert on jungle warfare. Half his family were colonels here. Well, he, he's really quite all right. I mean, he's... He's frightfully bright upstairs. Aye, he was a great success as a lecturer. Quite a turn with the cadets. Colonel Barrow, Eaton and Oxford, joined the regiment in 1933. He was only with it a year or two before being posted on special duties. It's as Simpson says, he's bright upstairs. That's his... Uh, 
Grandad's ugly mug hangs halfway along the hall there. Aye, I know all about him, you see that? Well, he's to command the battalion. And I'll have another dram. What about you, John? I am what about me, China? Are you staying on? Unless you're going to get rid of me, Jimmy. <laughs> well, I thought there might have been a chance of it. <laughs> staying on as second in command, you mean? So may it please you, Captain Simpson. Oh, I'm glad you're not leaving us, sir. Thank you, Eric. And Eric. Yes, sir. No sirs in the mess. Christian names, except for me, and I'm Colonel. I call you what I like. Understood? Yes, Colonel. Yes, Colonel. Go on, Charlie. We'll go through the way. Jock's last, eh? Uh, well, gentlemen, we'll have a round of drinks on Jock. Corporal, uh, uh, whiskey for the gentlemen that like it, and for the gentlemen that don't like it, whiskey. <laughs> I'm no use at talking at the best of times, Charlie, but tonight I'm no coping at all. Will we have the pipers back? Your night, nice, old boy? Aye, my night. Old boy, old boy, old boy. <laughs> well, I say we'll have the pipers. Laddie, call the pipers. Just a minute, sir. Just, sir, that's all you need to say. Aye, Charlie, we fought a war together, do you know that? And you'll have a tune, and I'll have a tune, and Anne Macmillan there will have a tune. Thank you very much. And I'll have another tune. Charlie, why the hell did you shave the whiskers off? Oh, I don't know. Tickled the ladies. <laughs> I love you, Charlie. You know a great talker, right enough, but you're a lovely man. Hi, Pipers, and where have you been? The pantry, sir. Are you sober? Sir? Well, you bloody well better be, and that's a fact. You're no here to get sick drunk the same as the rest of us. We'll have a reel to sweat it out. Aye. If you can pass. Oh. Uh, aye, that's right. Hankies for the lassies. And a prettier lady I never saw. What? Officer's mess pantry, man. Quick now. <laughs> mess pantry. Sure, I'll tell him. Yeah. Sir, Colonel Barrows here, sir. Huh? Colonel Barrows, sir. What is it? Get back to your proper place. Colonel's here. Of course I'm here. You're drunk, laddie. <laughs> no, no. It's him. But damn it. There's no due till the morn. Pipers! Pipers is enough for you. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Barrow. Jock Sinclair, acting colonel. How do you do? I've heard a great deal about you. You might have given us a warning. Do you fancy the waistcoat? Uh, Jimmy Cairns, adjutant. Sir, how do you do? Charlie Scott, second in command. Colonel, Scott. Uh, Dusty Miller, mess president. How do you do? Sir. What company? She company, sir. There are too many damn subalterns to introduce. That's the deluge. Colonel, sir. Uh, sir. How do you do? And now, Colonel, may we have your permission to resume the dance that was interrupted? Oh, for heaven's sake, please. I'm not here officially until tomorrow. Thank you. Carry on, pipes. Charlie, we better break off. Uh, you'll join us in a drink, Colonel. Thank you. Free or with water? I'd rather have a soft drink, if I may. Anything will do. Not a whiskey? Not a whiskey. 
But we all drink whiskey in this battalion. Yes, I remember that. Whiskey doesn't really agree with me, I'm afraid. A lemonade for Colonel Barrow. Sir. This is my farewell party, you understand. There's no carry-on like this every night. Aye, so you, you found your way here all right. Oh, yes, I've been here before, you know. Aye, when was that? I came as a subaltern. From Sandhurst? From Oxford, as a matter of fact. From Oxford, fancy that. So you came in that way, with a university degree. For what it was worth. Well, I came in the other way, by Sy Hall Street. Boot boy, band boy, and Barlini. Barlini Jail? Just the cooler. Armistice night, 1933. Dead drunk and disorderly. Sounds a much better training. Happy days. Good luck. It'll be some time since you were with the battalion, I'm thinking. Yes, indeed. I feel quite a new boy. It's a while since I've been with any battalion. I've been sitting behind a desk for some time now. One of the lads said you used to teach at Sandhurst. Simpson? Yeah, Aye, you're right now. Uh, and what was it you said you did before? I don't think I did say. You didn't? Like you, Sinclair, I was in jail. A prisoner of war camp, eh? Officers' privileges and amateur dramatics. It's not quite the same thing. I think I would have preferred Barlini jail. Good night. Scott. Colonel. Bottles three quarters empty. Nonsense. It's a quarter full. Have I been such a bad colonel, Charlie? Have I? <laughs> Never knew a better. Oh, well, stop your fibbing. Oh, honest to God, why? The war, old boy, that was. Old wasn't... boy, old boy, old boy. You asked me, and I told you. For God's sake, chump. Do you really think that, Charlie? Sure, absolutely. That's not right. You nurse them from Alamein to Casino, from Dover to Berlin, just to get some spry wee gent put over your head at the end. It's no fair, it isn't. Oh, he's here now. The new boy, call himself, all in his mufti. I fancy the poor laddie's got tabs in place of tits. I'll pass the bottle. There's a good chump. You think we can dispense with glasses? Aye. Hmm? If anyone has the right to get fooled tonight, it's Jock Sinclair and his friend Charlie Scott. Did you hear him say that about the whiskey? He doesn't drink it, says he. Sad. They had no right to come blowing in here like that without warning. It was a bad form, that's why he was. Now, whatever way you look at it, they'd no right to put him in above me. It makes me angry, Charlie. It makes me very, very... angry. Who's that through there? Who's that through there saying who's that through there? Which man? Who is it? Corporal Fraser, sir. What the hell are you doing here at this hour of night? Waiting, sir. Waiting? Who for? For you, sir. You told me to wait. Did I know? And you've been waiting and cussing and binding and swearing off. Well, uh, I, I know. Uh, I've, I've been a piper myself. Sir? You got a girl downtown, Corporal. You got a piece of cherry cake. Have we kept you away from her? Well, Corporal, have you got a tongue in your head? Sir? Have you got a lassie? Sir? Is that not dandy, Charlie? The Corporal's got a lassie. Good for the Corporal. No, no, Major Scott. 
You should say, um, good for the lassie. It's not every lassie gets a Corporal Piper. No, it's not. Is she bonny, Corporal? I think so, sir. I think so, he says. Tell me, Corporal, um, are your intentions strictly honorable? Yes, indeed, sir. And then you're a bloody fool, Corporal, is what you are. You leave honorable intentions to fathers like me. It's late, old chum. Are you failing, you miserable man? Are the lights going out all over, Charlie? Mm, and all over barracks. It's after three, old boy. Is that so? Oh, boy. Corporal, you see before you the body of a major. And the ghost of a colonel. They instruct you to dismiss. To some of us, sir, you will always be the colonel. Corporal Fraser, the penalty for mutiny is death. Dismiss. <coughs> I'm thinking when I, I, I'm talking to the corporal there, it's the pipe major I should have been. And I'd have been good, I would. But that was not the way of it. Hitler saw to that. And Rommel. One desert night. This is my battalion. I've acted colonel, and I should be colonel. And by this hand, Charlie boy, I bloody well will be colonel, so I will. Oh, you bastard. You bastard. And you're no good listener, either. Were you late again last night? Ish. Late-ish. I had to stay to keep the others company. You're a bad man. I'm on parade now, spick and span. Do I have to finish all this? You do, every spoon of it. <laughs> What's he like? Who? The new colonel, of course. How the hell do you know he'd arrived? Oh, he barely told me. Was anyone here last night? Someone from the barracks? Nobody. Did you go there, then? Did you? I've told you before. Oh, Father, and I... let's not have all this over again. You'll no go near the place without telephoning me first. There's only one sort of girl seen hanging about a barracks. I'm not a child. I know you're not. That's just what I'm saying. I'll go where I want. You'll go where you're told just yet a while. And where were you half the night? Tell me that. Down at the theater with that actress, I suppose. I'll not have that. I'll not have impertinence from you. Now you listen to me, Marag. Oh. Don't turn away from me. Don't do that. Well, I can only make the rules to help you. But you've got to keep them. Well, say something. Yes, Father. It's time you went. Aye. That's a fact. Way out to the car, lad, and we'll give you a lift. Sir. What's he like? Barrow? Oh, he's a wee man. Father, it had to be. I just said 
He's a wee man. It had to be. As a matter of fact, I'm no with you. It need never have been. But it's my opinion he'll no be CO for very long. Father, you'll not do something stupid. Oh, for Pete's sake, lassie. Do you expect me to hang out a flag? Out! Ah! Personally, I was never very keen on the ballet. If you can't do it, we get down on your knees and do it. On the knees, stop! Chankers, I'd almost forgotten. Ah, pull that easy. No doubt they deserve it. Who's that man? Jim Cameron. The best heavyweight we ever had till he got a bullet in his guts in the desert. Someone should tell him to put his hat on straight. Now pick yourself up. Ready? Ah! Let down stiff leg. Do it again. Put some guts into it. Here, here. Have you got a mother-in-law, soldier? No, sir. Do you hate anyone? Don't think so, sir. What about the regimental sergeant major? Sir. Have you no teeth, corporal? Sir. Then smile, laddie. Even under King's regulations, that's allowed. According to the timetable, shouldn't they finish at ten? A dusty mob's always ten minutes behind the rest of us. That's a tradition goes back to Alamein, boy. <laughs> There's Greenwich time and summer time and army time and dusty time. You'll get used to it, Colonel. I don't promise that I will, Major Miller. Oh! Colonel! Oh! Oh! It is seven minutes past ten. Aye, it's quite late, Colonel. It is. Three minutes to go, eh, does he? This period finishes at ten o'clock. I like things to be exact. Sir. Yourself is a great bad. Not a wrong one anywhere. Here... Tell me, are there any regulations as to what should be worn for band practice? Oh, no, you see, it's the piping that's important. Are there any regulations, Pipe Major? Well, the hair's foreign in the Glen Gary, sir, but during I the see. war, we. Three, four, five men in Tam O'Shanters and probably rest. Take their names. Sir. Colonel, there's a tradition here that... I'm all in favor of good traditions. I've always let the pipers wear pretty well what they please at band practice. Because you've let them wear what they like, Jock, doesn't make it a tradition. Jimmy, I think we'd better tackle some of that paperwork. You know what the barrel boy made us do this morning? Double halfway back from the ranges in full marching order. He's inspected A Company three times in the last five days. Yes, it's been a somewhat harassing two weeks. What? It's typical of him. He's beginning where he means to finish. Well, if he's finishing on three inspections a week, I am going after the commissioner's job at the Royal. You wouldn't get it, Dusty. You'd have to keep your buttons clean. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's he want us for anyway? I've got better things to do than. Please. All here, Jimmy? All present, sir. Major Sinclair? Why? Uh, he's not been in, Colonel. I didn't think the order affected him, sir. I see. Well, gentlemen. I've only got two announcements to make this afternoon, one perhaps a little less popular than the other. 
When I came here as a subaltern, the social responsibilities of an officer greatly outweighed his military duties. Now, this was quite common before the war, and the last thing I want to do is to re-establish that order. We are first and foremost soldiers, and the greater part of our energies must naturally be devoted to training. On the other hand, gentlemen, it is important that we remember to play our part in the social life of the locality. On the 20th of February, therefore, a month tomorrow, I have decided we will have a cocktail party. <laughs> now, the next point is a minor one, but quite an important one, I believe. One of the great things about a battalion such as this is that it's had its headquarters in the same place for more than 200 years. For this reason, gentlemen, it is essential that we maintain certain standards. We have the reputation for being tough men in war. We must also maintain our reputation for being gentlemen in peace. What's he getting at? Old school tie. Please don't talk. Colonel. In this connection, I would mention the way we dance. Now, I'm well aware that you all know the steps. But some, I feel, need reminding that dancing should be considered a social grace rather than a noisy ritual. Therefore, starting tomorrow, each Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning at 0715 hours, there will be dancing for three quarters of an hour before breakfast. <laughs> no one will raise his hands above his head except in the foursome reel. No shouting. No swinging on one arm. The pipe major will take the parade, and you will report dressed as you are now, but with plimsolls on. Subaltern's turnout, I presume, Colonel. All officers. Give me the right thing that I want to ask you. I've been dancing reels for 30 years. I thought he said his visit the other night was unofficial. You said something, Captain Rattray? Stop. What? I said I thought you said your presence at Jock's party was unofficial, sir. It was unofficial. But I warn you, that sort of remark is extremely ill-advised. That's all, gentlemen. Thank you. Sure it is. I said it was a sassana. Half a crying out loud. Steady, steady, steady. I'm afraid they're not going to like it, sir. Who aren't going to like what? I think you know what I mean, sir. That block over there, band block, isn't it, sir? The windows are filthy, you can see from here. Uh, Colonel, I... I wouldn't do it unless I thought it was absolutely necessary. But Colonel, it's almost an insult. I don't think so. Some of them have been dancing for 30 years or more. Then it's a pity they haven't learned to dance like gentlemen. But surely the officers will feel right. You will not contradict me. Do you understand? Colonel. Uh, kindly tell the pipe major that I want to see him. Major! Good afternoon, sir. Can I help you? See you wants a word with you. Oh, certainly, sir. Now? Right away. Yes, it's a pleasure, sir. Attend. Come! Stand still, will you? Don't do that. Stand out. Hey! Corporal, sir. March him off. Sir. Hurry, son! Later! And for quick march. Look, will. Left right, left right, left right! Get him over there, you iron scruffy lot, you! CO. With your permission. March in, Mr. McLean, march in. Oh, thank you, Mr. Riddick. That's just what I'll be doing. You. What are you doing with that? Who oh, is tea, sir. What do you suppose I thought it was? Beer? Tea break, 15.30 hours. Time now, 15.25. Sir. In there. Put it on the desk. You will not fetch tea until the proper time, you understand? Sir? And wear your hat. March out. Order! 
All the papers are good, sir. And we'll send along Corporal Fraser. He's tactful, you know. Very good, Pipe Major. Thank you, sir. It's, uh... It's some time since we had a subaltern's parade of this kind, sir. It isn't only subalterns, you understand. Oh. Oh, but surely the senior officers... The order affects all officers. All the officers, sir. I see, sir. Oh, come in, Jimmy. We've finished. Oh, Pipe Major. Yes, sir. One other thing. The windows of the band block will do the wash. Oh, I said I'll mention that to the drum major. We'll have them seen to straight away. It's the terrible way. Straight away. Like. Thank you very much, sir. Cup of tea, Mr. McLean. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr. Riddick. Ah, there's enough there for one. Hello, hello. Let's trouble you, mark my words. Hello, Jock. Do I intrude? Yeah, what can we do for you? Uh, no, don't go, Jimmy. Uh, I was wondering if you wanted me for anything this afternoon. Oh, thank you. No, I don't think there are any more queries just at the moment. I'm afraid this must be a terrible bore for you just now. Uh, what have you been doing the day? Oh, nothing much, isn't that? Jimmy and I have just been running over some of the fire precautions. I noticed on the chart here there aren't any extinguishers in the naffy. There are three or four there. I remember them well. They're not on the chart here. Well, you'll find them there right enough. Is that not correct, Jim? Oh, yes, quite right. We've been over and checked. Oh, what the hell, then? I was never any good at the paperwork, anyway. And I don't enjoy paperwork much myself. Is that so? I would have thought Whitehall would give a man a taste for it. Would you? Well, John, thanks for calling in. We mustn't keep you. This uh, dancing caper, I just heard about it. You don't expect me to turn up, do you? All officers. It's not on, boy. I'm not looking forward to 7.15 myself very much, but I think we'd best all turn up. Is that an order? If you like to put it that way. Now, look here, boy. Can't you? I prefer to be addressed as Colonel, if you don't mind. Very well, Colonel. If you and I... And if I may suggest some other time. Quite need we, lily boy that he is. With his, if I may suggest some, some other times. All the keeper. What's the matter with you two? Exactly as I said, Mr. McLean. I've seen change of commanding officer before today. Always trouble. But this one will be better, I tell you. Better by far. Uh, that's your opinion, Mr. Riddick. Yes. yes. Well, shall I tell you why? Well, I'm thinking we'll not agree. Right, I will. Because he's a gentleman, that's why. Ach, you're the terrible snob, Mr. Riddick. It's always the same with you people who started in the Brigade of Guard. You're such terrible snobs. Ach, it's wicked. Are you attempting to insult my late regiment? Tell me that, Mr. McLean. No, I am not. If you want to insult my late regiment, then we'll meet in the gymnasium. Peter Pan, that's what we should call you. Ach, man, you're far too old to be going to the gymnasium. Away home and watch your television set. Muffin the mule's on at five o'clock. By God, you impudent man, I'll march you right inside. You! Sir? You horrible, filthy little man, you. You're dirty! That's what you are, dirty! Son! Sir, take his name! What's your name? Goring E. What's the last 
drinking for long? No, lass, I have not been drinking for long. You've just been drinking all day. I have not. Well, you've certainly had a few. How do you know? Your eyes. Oh, that's very romantic. They're pink. You're bloody rude, that's what you are. Uh, will you have a seat, Jock? Oh, thanks very much. Surprised to see me? Yes. Ah. Looking very well, Mary. Uh, well, I can't think why. I've had two shows today. Has Miss, um, what's her name? Uh, Rosie, your roommate, gone? She's not in this play. My sister Eileen. Is that it? Next week's. Oh, very good. Uh, and are you Eileen? Eileen's 18. You're Eileen, sure you are. I hear you've got a new colonel up the road. So we have. Are you sore? What's he like? Oh, he's a stupid wee man. For instance? Instance. He's making us take dancing lessons. Me too. <laughs> I'll put you over my knee. I know just to spank you. You can forget that. Have you got a whiskey? No. In the drawer, is it? Uh, Mary, uh, I'll pay for it. Oh, for heaven's sake. No, I will. Of course you won't. The old times, Siggy. Uh, shall we weigh out one of these nights, uh, the Highlander and the Welcome Hotel for old Lang Syne? It'd be cheaper at your own home. Oh, you, you know I don't drink there. You mean you won't take me there? Oh, Mary, that's not it. But, uh, I, I'm no the man to drink in front of a young daughter. <laughs> You're a liar, Jock Sinclair. But I'll say this for you. You're a bad liar. Oh, Mary, that's been a long time. Could we no lock the door? We could not. Oh, good night, Mary. Good night. I could make you if I wanted to. Jock Sinclair, you're the most conceited man I've ever met. You're not all that great, Shakes. And there's lots know that, I can assure you. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I definitely no. You didn't used to say no. You didn't used to be a stranger. But, Mary, I'm back. And stinking. You're left stinking and you're back stinking. You can't turn the clock back. We can wind it up again. Oh, uh, Mac, I want to put the lights out. Oh, come on, come on. Go on, now a way out of here before you get me sacked. I mean it. Away you go. Goodbye, it is. And I mean goodbye. <laughs> Good night. Jock! <laughs> oh, you're a bloody <laughs> woman. Dusty, dusty. 
Oh. Come on, Rivalli's sounded. He? Rivalli. Nonsense. Rivalli's not for another ten minutes. That, I just had it. That was ten minutes ago. It's dancing class. We're on in three minutes. Oh, he'll... Oh. Hand me my kilt of burning gold. <coughs> Where are my plimsolls of desire? It's cruelty. That's what it is. Cruelty. Margot Fontaine couldn't suffer more. Oh, I must go up. Be on the carpet. Gentlemen, form up in your sets. We'll begin with the simplest part first. That is the first lady in the middle facing your part. Yes, sir. Now it's eight hands round and back. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, round. One, two, three, four, five, six, set to partner. Set, two, turn, two. And set, two, turn, figure three. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Captain Radley, uh, that little dance you're doing in the middle there, the hands at the sides, if you please, not above the head. But surely, Pipe Major, that's a question of individual style. I put my hands up ever since I learned to dance. Yes, I know, sir, but it's just these little points of style that we're trying to make consistent. You know, Mr. McLean, I'm darn sure the hand should be above the head in the eighth. It is known, Major Sinclair, but before the war, at the balls, I mean, the gentleman did not put their hands above the head. Uh, I still think Captain Ratter is right. Come along, Pipe Major. It's far too cold to hang about. Well, am I keeping up then, or what? Oh, of course you are, lad. Yeah. Isn't he, Mr. McLean? Kindly don't interrupt the pipe major. He's in charge of this parade, and we will all follow his instructions. Carry on, pipe major. Uh, sir, Corporal, with music this time. Back to your places now, gentlemen. And it's the same again. Are you ready? Ready! And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and set. Set, two, turn. Two, set, two, turn, reel of three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and round. Sir. I'm sorry you have to go so soon. And we're very sorry too, I assure you, that Colonel Barrow. If I'd known it was going to be such a delightful evening, we'd have cancelled our second function. Look, here's the pony in the best too. Yes, uh, actually, he's collecting for the soldiers, sailors, and airmen's fund. Oh, a uh, most worthy charity. Uh, excellent idea. Well, good night again. Have you got a bobby in it? Thing. You enjoying yourself, Miss Sinclair? It's a wonderful party. Such a good idea having the dancing. It's a pleasure to watch you. I can see you're an expert. Me? I'm nothing of the kind. I've just been complimented on my dancing. Oh, I most sincerely. What the hell does he know about Highland dancing, eh? <laughs> That's a question I'd like I don't to ask. what he knows. It was nice of him to say so. I think you're being unfair to him. Oh, fine. But there's no need to bow and scrape. He's no the brigadier, you know. Just another colonel. <laughs> She's looking really lovely tonight, Doc. Keeping all the uh, lads on their toes. You can cut that out. Doc! Are you dancing? Hi! I'm dancing, all right. Come on. Uh, colonel Barrow. 
I've been standing here envying you. The first post-war party. The fruits of victory, eh? And the same date, too. February 20th, every year comes snow or ice, the barracks party. Right up to 1941. But I'm teaching my grandmother how to suck eggs. I should think the first Colonel Barrow started the tradition. But you carry it on now, won't you? Every year, you promise? You'll insist, my friend. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. I'm afraid I was interrupted. Well, I was simply saying, by, by putting on a show like this, you're giving us all a taste for it again. Well, I'm very glad you're enjoying it, sir. You know, it was the same with the Camerons up in Inverness. The barracks party was always the best of the lot. Excuse me, Sir Jimmy. Jimmy, what's going on out there? Oh, it's only one or two of them, Colonel. It sounds like a bullfight. They're quieting down, they've had a dram. It's a bit cheerful. Good evening, Sir Alan. I will not tolerate this sort of behavior. I made it perfectly clear. Yeah. Colonel, look, sir, I agree. But, well, not now. The guests don't mind, sir. They... It's rank disobedience. I won't let it pass. Now, look, we could have it out in the morning, sir. Don't argue with me. I did. I've never seen such an exhibition. You'll see me tomorrow. Pipes fall out. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the party's over. It's, uh, it's late. I'm sorry that, uh, it should end like this. I, um, I apologize to my guests. We were just beginning to enjoy ourselves, Colonel. Who said that? I did. Adjutant, take that officer's name. I was am I right? You are nothing of the sort. I was dumb by form. That's what I was. In front of all the guests. What'll I say in the morning, eh? What'll I tell him? <laughs> Jock, man, you've no right to behave like that. We, oui, Jimmy. Are you telling Jock how to behave? Is that it? Oh, for God's sake. Colonel! Colonel Barrow! the plan for him, but I don't care what you say. He'd no right behaving oh, like that. It was awful. Never heed. It's not your fault. Are you sure you can make it? Yes, but I have to go home first. Three quarters of an hour. All right. Bridge Hotel, private bar, okay? Driving's one way of getting something out of the system. What a ghastly thing to do. Oh, people always do silly things in mess parties as part of the tradition. <laughs> I remember somebody... Not the Colonel. Why not? The Colonel's human the same as the rest of us, isn't he? 
Ridicule is always the finish. Oh, now, who said anything about ridicule? They behave badly, and you tore a strip off them. Is there anything wrong in that? Strange I should stop at this spot. I used to come here sometimes. When was that? Oh, years ago. But the future was bright. I had one pip and no chips on my shoulder. Did you ever dream when you were a subaltern, Jimmy? No, oh, I... Big, brave deeds. I was going to win the VC and die a hero. When you're dying, when you really believe you're dying, you think of the most absurd things. My war, I never had time to think. Oh, well, they gave me time, all right. Again and again. When I was in the prison camp, they nearly drowned me, then they brought me round. Then they put a wet cloth over my mouth and kept it wet until I nearly drowned again. And the only thing that pulled me through was the thought that one day I'd come back and sit in the middle of that table as colonel of this battalion. Like my grandfather and his father before him. Only I was going to be the best of the lot. Well, then, it did pull you through. You survived. Surely nothing can seem too hard now. Who said I survived? Oh, come on, sir. You're here to tell the tale. I was married once, you know. And that's all finished now. I'm sorry. I... I've been rather lonely since. I, I think that's why I was looking forward to this job, job so much. I'm sorry. You're a very patient man, Jimmy, and I'm very... Uh, I'm very grateful. You've got no coat. I'm sorry. She was there. And you I talked was... to her, eh? No, no. No, I went back the next day. Oh, and then you talked to her? No. No, I had to go back the third day. So you must be getting very proficient at the ice skating, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a good piper and a good corporal, and a soldier's private life is his own, but uh, you're asking for trouble, young. Do you have to go on seeing her? Thank you. Yes, Pipey. Thank you. I do. Please. See you later, Friday. Night. 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 See you later. give you all a dram. Now, sir? That's what I'm saying. Uh, it's late, sir. That's it, sir. It's too late. Right enough. Oh, for this time. We'll all have a drink on an ex-piper. No colonel at all. For God's sake, can you not stop him? Lounge bar. Hey, uh, lounge bar, sir. It's not the private. We always use it's the It's the lounge the bar we use now, sir. It's uh, very cosy and uh, respectable. Good evening. Oh, what's it to be then? A whiskey? Yes, no chance of that, sir. Uh, still under the counter then? Aye. Oh, Mr. Scobie is an old friend of mine. Have you any whiskey for us? I have not. Ah. Just a beer for me, sir. Cobro. The same, sir. A rum, sir. Rum, sir. A rum, sir. Uh, you all take rum then? Aye, sir. It's our hobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm losing count. Uh, that's uh, two beers, Mr. Scobie. And a dram for an ex piper and uh, three rums. Would, would you care for a cigarette, sir? Your 
bloody wee liar. Father, I'll explain. I can tell you why I'm here. Sir, I've been meeting. You're a liar! So it's my fault, sir. You keep your nose out of this. I'm not having any problems in my hotel. Wait in the other bar, lads. I see to the lassie, too. We'll just be one minute, Mr. Stone. Off you go now. Oh, I cannot understand it at all. A man of your experience to do such a thing, such a stupid thing. What do you think made me do it? Eh? Did you not know about that young man? No. Did she not tell you? No. Ah, well, maybe it was just the shock of it all, eh? I just that. He was in his uniform, wasn't he? I'm afraid he was. I saw Jock, what on earth are you doing here? Is something wrong? Hi, Mary. I've done a stupid thing. Can I come in? Oh, Jock, I don't want you in at this hour. I, um... Well, what is it you've done? I've bashed a corporal. You've what? In a pub. I don't know what came over me. And the lad was in uniform. Oh, Jock, that's serious. It's more than that. It's suicidal. Well, you'd better come in. As a matter of fact, I've got company. Oh, who? It's all right. It's a friend. Charlie Scott, what are you doing here? Visiting, old boy. Just visiting. Take a pew. With you two all cosily tucked up. Hell, I'm no as sorry for myself as all that. I'm only sorry I intruded. Oh, don't judge everybody by yourself, Jock. Charlie, Jock's bashed a corporal. Not wise, old man. And maybe any minute he'll bash a major, too. Fitting smooth old stoat. Jock! Oh, never worry. I'll no kick him. He's a terror with the ladies. Our oh, Charlie. Oh, you're just jumping to conclusions. Charlie, what can we do about this? Jock hit him in a pub. You'll do nothing about it. Jock can see the score and Jock's a way out of here. Charlie! Night, old boy. To hell with the civilities, old boy. Jock! Jock! You all right? I'm all right, Lassie. Don't know fast yourself. Report went through to Barrow's office an hour ago. Oh, hell. And Jock? Taken cover. The Barrow boy will fix him, but what right I don't know after his little exhibition last night. Not the same thing, chum. Shouting and screaming at a cocktail party, that's one thing. But thou shalt not bash a corporal. That's different, that's the law. It's very unpleasant. My motives are bound to be suspected. But that's neither here nor there. I shan't be swayed by any personal considerations. One wants to try and get an objective view of the thing. That's why I've asked Scott over. It's all a great pity. It's easy to be lenient, but striking a corporal in uniform in a public place, that is damn serious, Jimmy. Oh, I see that, Colonel, but I'm sure Charles will take the same view as well, myself. Well, I... Come in. Hello, Scott. Colonel. You heard about last night? I heard. 
High jinks at the Piper's Hideaway. The question now is, do we forget the incident or do we go on? Jimmy here has expressed his views, but before I make up my own mind, I'd like to have your opinion. You realize, of course, that if we do go on, it will probably mean a court-martial. Certain to, I'd say. That sort of thing doesn't do the battalion's name any good. It does its name more harm if the story leaks out, and we've done nothing about it, Colonel. You think so? Of course. But Charlie, Jock's a special case. Is he? In a pub, in uniform, in front of witnesses. Am I right? Perfectly correct. Oh, I know, I know, but... Look, if Corporal Fraser had put in a complaint, then there'd be nothing we could do, but he hasn't, and I don't think he will. It wasn't really a military matter at all, Charlie. Fred, I can't agree with you, old man. Of course, it's your decision, Colonel. Yes, of course. It won't make you very popular, I'm afraid. That's the fate of a commanding officer. I hope that won't sway me from doing my job properly. Well, thank you, Scott. Well, now, look, Charlie, before you go... Just a minute, Jimmy. Tell the Sergeant Major I've made up my mind and make the necessary arrangements to collect all the evidence. There will be a formal inquiry and papers passed up to Brigade. Don't take it too hard, Chan. Of course I take it hard, Charlie. Didn't he meet us? Didn't he teach me all this old thing? I love Jock? Jock, are you there? Hello. Mary, what the hell are you doing here, lass? What the hell are you doing there? Me, I'm cleaning my teeth. In your greatcoat? At this hour of the morning? Laddie, what are you up to? It's my own kind of naffy break. Come in, come in. I'd offer you some coffee if I knew where it was. Or some booze. Never mind. I think Morag must hide it. Do you not have an orderly these days? I sent him away. Morag's gone, you know. Uh, gone to stay with a friend, shall we say. Poor wee Rassie. Jock. I've told Charlie he's had it. You what? Well, he'd no right to do it. I'm through with him. Barra would never have dared to move without him. I could see that a mile off. You mystify me, woman. What are you trying to tell me? Charlie hasn't told you. You tell me. Well, Barrow had Charlie in this morning. He asked him what he thought. And Charlie came down against you. Charlie told you this? I was on the phone to him. He never told me. Maybe he isn't going to. Well, that's an awful thing to say. Charlie's not a sneak. Did he tell you what Barrow said? There's going to be a formal inquiry. Uh-huh. Well, that's it. That's a finish. But Charlie'd never do anything out of spite. You see us when we're drunk and playing the fool. You don't see the other side. He's a good officer, Charlie. You know I never make trouble. I know nothing about you, nothing at all. Oh, Mary, dear. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. No, really, I am. It's no business of mine anyway. Oh, lassie. You can't have officers bashing corporals. I know that fine. I'd have done the same as Charlie. Never in a hundred years, Jock. That's the whole difference. You always think good of them. But there's none of them live up to you. You're a way out in front. I'm tired. Fair bashed. Look at me. Man, it was you that taught me that you could always go on. You had a word. Resilience. The front teeth. The ones you hang on with, eh? I'll be all right. I had the hell of a night. 
you've got to go back in there. If it's only for my sake. Jock. I lay in bed this morning with my eyes closed. And I look down a list of men that's too long by half. And I ask myself what the hell I can show at the end of it. Except for wear and tear. Then I stopped at your name. And I said out loud to the ceiling. I've been held in the arms of a man who was truly brave. For heaven's sake, don't take that away from me, too. Lassie, I'm no coping at all. No matter. I'm not here to tell you that I love you. I'm not even here for the old invitation. I'm just here to say that it's not possible for Jock Sinclair to be too tired. Spit and polish, eh? That's it. Shoe shine and shave and back in there. I'm no good at the compliments, Mary, dear. Does it sound more like an insult if I see you're a soldier's girl? No, <laughs> Jock. No, it's not meant to anyway. <laughs> if it doesn't say one hell of a lot for your chastity, it's a load about the heart. Come on. <laughs> oh, this will never do. Away and run, you father. <laughs> Fine, cheerful greeting. Dusty, would you be so kind as to press that on the wall and we'll see if I can get myself a drink? Certainly, John. Certainly. Uh, Charlie, was it you trying to telephone me this morning? Me, old boy? No. Dear Mummy, my chillblains are terrible. Good morning, Corporal. Good morning, sir. Are uh, you feeling the heat, Corporal? It's cold, sir. Well, no wonder it's cold, lad. You're naked. Do up your collar button. Sir. Then you can bring me one hell of a whiskey. Sir. Steady, lad, steady. What are you drinking, Charlie? Actually, I've had lunch. What are you drinking? I'm asking something that's a question of fact, not just a rumor. What's in your glass? Brandy. And one hell of a brandy. Old boy. Jogman, can I have a word with you? Now, what is it? Not here. Is it sharp? Sort of. Is it sharp, I'm asking? Hi, it is. No, not now, not in the mess. Well, 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 well. And what's news today? Is there no news? Surely some wee bit of gossip, eh? McKinnon. It snowed. Plus ten for observation. Oh, laddie. Look, Jock, I've got to talk to you. It's dead important. Jimmy, Jimmy, lad, nothing's that important. Nothing at all. And maybe I don't want to know. This might be important, Jock. Really, quite. God knows what you all think I am. You must think I'm deaf and dumb and blind. Do you think I don't know what's going on? Good morning, Colonel. Good morning. Won't you join us? Uh, thank you, but I've just had lunch. A brandy, perhaps? No, thank you. Actually, I'm shooting this afternoon. I won't, if you don't mind. Just some coffee. Would Charlie like a coffee, too? Uh, no, no, Major Scott, I I'll get it. Excuse me, Colonel. 
Charlie doesn't take cream in his coffee. That's very sophisticated, isn't it? I really wouldn't know, Jock. Jock. Eric, is that no sophisticated? Not especially, I shouldn't have thought. Not especially, I shouldn't have thought. Yeah, actually, in point of fact, if you know what I mean, old boy. Out of hell with you, Charlie Scott, you can get your own coffee. Jock's going to lunch. We'll keep him company. Jimmy? Uh, not me, Jock. Uh, I'm sorry. Early parade. Have I got to eat alone, then? I'll keep your company, Jock. Me too. Eric Rattray's not the lad to let you down. I tell you, it is not for us to interfere. And I tell you, Mr. Riddick, it's your duty as senior warrant officer to express the opinion of every other non-commissioned officer in this battalion. I'll not do it, Mr. McLean. Then I shall, Mr. Riddick. You'll do no such thing, you impudent man! March in, Mr. Riddick. March in. Come in. Permission to speak, sir, please. Yes, Mr. Riddick, what is it? Sir, been talking with the pipe major, sir. I believe he's had a word with the adjutant. Well, go on. Perhaps we're being a little hasty with this inquiry, sir. What did you say? Wouldn't express an opinion of this sort unless it was the opinion of all the non-commissioned officers, sir. It does seem as how they feel such an inquiry would... Mr. Riddick, you astonish me. I thought I gave an order that the evidence would be collected. Sir, I understood the order. Sir, then obey it. Mr. Riddick, I realize this can't be a popular order, but it is an order. It's the good of the battalion we must think of. Begging your pardon, sir, it was the good of the battalion we were considering. Feel the battalion might best be served if you were to deal with this little matter yourself. There's no question of that, do you hear me? No question of it. Damn it, the sergeant's mess isn't a senate. For God's sake, Mr. Riddick, if an officer strikes another rank, he has to pay for it, hasn't he? Well, hasn't he? Sir. Well, get cracking with it. Sir. Come in. Please, sir, would you like a donut with your tea? A what? A, a donut, sir. Some of the lads have donuts with their teas on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. They cost four pence each, sir, but they're very good. I could arrange it, sir. Not for me. Well, I strongly recommend them, sir. No, thank you. Oh, very good, sir. I just thought I would ask you. Colonel Sinclair always used to like one with his tea. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Sir.
You chaps been playing squash? The nearest squash court, sir. It's 30 miles. Speed for a run, Colonel. You haven't by any chance seen Major Sinclair, have you? Jimmy said he was in the mess. He's sleeping it off, sir, in Dusty's room, 21. Uh, thank you, Sidney, thank you. Well, I'm glad to see that some of my officers take some energetic exercise in the afternoons. I don't see why you should always be so damn rude, Alec. After all, it's a tricky situation for him. This is no here. I gathered that. I came to see you. Did I wake you? You did. Well, I'm sorry, but I think it's important. I'm afraid that I haven't... Um... Uh, there, there's a packet in my pocket there. What's the time, Colonel? At uh, four o'clock. On a gloomy afternoon. I thought you were out shooting whatever it is gentlemen shoot. I decided not to go. Now, this is quite unofficial, you understand, but I want to have things out in the open. If you're trying to bewilder me, Colonel, you're doing fine. I'm not trying to bewilder you. On, on the contrary, I... Uh... This isn't easy for me, you know. What do you think it is for me, a bloody picnic? No, I don't think that. Jock, I'm sorry. Really sorry. Whatever the circumstances, no reasonable man can be expected to enjoy the business of hurting a brother officer. Oh, for Pete's sake. All right, yes, sorry. Good for you. You haven't told me yet what you've done anyway. Mr. Riddick is collecting formal evidence with a view to court martial. I'm afraid I had no choice. What do you mean, no choice? You could deal with it yourself, couldn't you? I wish I could. You're the colonel, aren't you? That's exactly what I mean. And I put it to you, under the given circumstances, can you find any possible reason why I shouldn't send you up for trial? If one of my officers had done it, I'd give him one such hell of a row. I took my orders from Brigade, but I never had to take my dirty washing there. There were civilian witnesses present. If I oh, had... Oh, to hell with you, Barrow boy. Why, are you a man or a book? You come in here to say sorry in one breath and ax me down with the next. You'll be away to brigade in a year or two anyway. What does commanding the battalion mean to you? Nothing. Nothing? You may have come in here as a boy piper, Sinclair, but I was here before you. I was born with this regiment, born into an idea. The bandaged feet at Corona. The square at Waterloo, the thin red line. The charge of the Highlanders hanging onto the cavalry stirrups and Scotland, the brave. The mud at Passchendaele in which my own father fell. And I've kept up with the history. I even know the chapter where you took over in the desert, sitting on the edge of a Bren gun carrier like a bobby at a tattoo. Accuse me of anything you like, Jock, but don't accuse me of not caring. I've eaten, walked, slept and dreamt this regiment since my first toy soldier. I'm sorry. No, 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 don't be sorry. Perhaps it's rather late for apologies on either side. But if I could, with honor, find a way out, I assure you I would take it. No, 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 Colonel. No, no. Well, I'm lying here thinking, uh, who's hurt by the headlines? Ex-Colonel strikes lover boy corporally. And I'll tell you who suffers most. Not Morag, not the corporal, not me, but... Um, you express yourself better than me. Uh, not just the battalion. What was it you said? The idea. That's it. The idea of the battalion. The living and the dead. All together. The regiment. That's what suffers most. Colonel, I've made a bloody fool of myself. I know that fine. I'll not do that twice. Not if I get the second chance. I'd be behind you, Barrow. 
We'd make a good team. Give Jock's word on that. All right. You mean you won't press it further? That's what I seem to have said. Oh, God, man. You won't regret it. You won't regret it, Colonel, I promise you that. I hope you're right. Toy soldier. <laughs> Any more talk of lassies in the mess, lad, and we'll have the kilt off you. Is that not so, uh, uh, we'll right. sit him on the table and have him uh, dancing in his belt. Uh, uh, here, for kidding. Uh, it's you, you cardinal pup. Waiter! Where the hell have they all got to waiter? You won't know what's coming to bring me a whiskey. And we'll have another round on me. Careful, laddie. That's the second round you've had this month. Are you accusing me of being mean? Oh, never that. Oh, no. Never. Oh, oh, you wicked bastards. <laughs> I'll blow you Jack. all out she of the universe, I will. Come no, 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 the rain. Now I've got you where I want you. <laughs> the, uh, the colonel here is the expert in the pentathlon. Oh, I, the pentathlon. Uh, I reckon you'll have to train a team yourself, sir. Who do you think? How about Rattray down there, eh? Uh, yes, uh, yes, he'd do. He'd have to get into pretty strict training. A few cross-country... Come on, John. Give us a song. Oh, no, no. I want to hear young McKinnon here sing. Oh. <laughs> no, John Dust is the one for the song. Oh, oh I'd rather I'll sing myself than hear well, Dusty I'll sing. A Gordon for me, a Gordon for me. If you're nay a Gordon, you're nay used to me. The black one shall blow, the sheep will shall roar. The cocky we got is the pride of them all. A Gordon for me, a Gordon for me. If you're nay a Gordon, you're nay used to me. The black one shall blow, the sheep will shall roar. The cocky we got is the pride of them all. Sit down, Not taking part in the celebration, Scott? Celebration, Colonel? I didn't know there was anything to celebrate. You think I've made the wrong decision, don't you? It's not for a company commander to judge. There's not to reason why. There's a world of difference between strength and obstinacy. I didn't want to take action just for the sake of showing it was in my power to do so. In a way, commanding a battalion is a question of compromise, keeping a team together. Oh, absolutely. It sounds as though it's a popular idea anyway, Colonel. Do you think I made it for my popularity? Do you really think that's why I made this decision? My dear Colonel, we didn't know you'd made any decision. But you must have heard the matters not to go to brigade. Yes, we heard that. Well? But we thought that was Jock's decision. Why, my dear fellow, we didn't even realize you were there. In my own humdrum life, I frequently funked doing something which I ought to do. I told myself after that the reason I hesitated was for humanity or loyalty or even Christianity. Not very dignified, 
one would have hoped a colonel would be older than that. You really mustn't get so upset, Colonel. Jock's in a sweat of loyal affection through there. Why not go back and join the rest of his cronies? He'll give you a great welcome, I'm sure. <laughs> Charlie Scott, what are you on your in for? Are you low, Charlie? Right as a cricket, little boy. Low tonight. Are you sad, Charlie? Charlie Scott, you interest me. Have you been having words with him that's lost me, Colonel, me benefactor? I have. And what did he talk about? He talked about compromise, not being prejudicial to good discipline. And you disapprove. Didn't twig, old boy. Two big words for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, you still think it should go to brigade, don't you? I thought his reasons for changing his mind hard to follow. But you still think I ought to be court-martialed? Of course, old boy. Well, we'll have the truth of us. You're a cool one, Charlie Scott. What else did he say? Nothing much. Just walked out. Gone into the garden, shouldn't wonder, to eat worms. <laughs> what was that? Who was the orderly officer? Sir? Go upstairs to Colonel Barrow's room. Then come back and report to me. Has somebody gone out? The orderly officer. He's not in his room. He's in the tub room. There's blood, sir. He shot himself. Wait here. Stupid wee beggar. Have you seen a shot man before? No, sir. Come on, then. 
first we'll make sure he's dead. Think so, sir. Then you can make your debut. If you're going to be a soldier, lad, you must learn to handle both the living and the dead. Well, that's your stock in trade. No, don't turn away. Look down at him straight. Is off, sit down. Information. Colonel Barrow was found dead on the evening of February the 21st, and on February the 23rd was adjudged of having committed suicide while the balance of his mind was disturbed. Inquiries were made of his wife, and it was her wish that the funeral arrangement should be made and executed by the officer now commanding the battalion. Attention. The battalion will bury their colonel. Joke? Funny joke? I'm sorry, colonel. Method. The colonel will be given the full honors of a martial funeral. We can divide the operation into three distinct parts. Before the ceremony, the burial itself, the return to barracks. Before the ceremony. The regimental sergeant major will parade the battalion in line, A company on the right, Carrying party and pipes and drums in the rear, the colour party under Mr. McKinnon. Sir. The carrying party itself will be comprised of the eight senior sergeants acting as bearers, with a full platoon of men drawn from all companies to pull the gun carriage. Good grief. I didn't ask for comments. On my command, the battalion will move to the right in columns of three and slow march out of barracks. There will be a rehearsal tomorrow at ten hundred hours. We'll deal with... Permission to interrupt, sir. Granted. Ten hundred hours is battalion orders, sir. There will be no battalion orders tomorrow. Begging your pardon, sir, there are several men under arrest. Don't answer me back, Mr. Riddick. Not now, not ever. The battalion will proceed at the slow march down to the crossroads, turning left off Stewart Road along Bridge Road to the High Street with the drums. The drums. The battalion will halt in Lothian Terrace. Honor arms. Officers of field rank will detach themselves, following the padre and the band contingent to the graveside. Flowers of the forest.
Mr. McLean. Sir. Who's the best piper? Who's the picked piper to be? Let me think now. They're, they're all good pipers, sir. <laughs> Jock's the best piper. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I'm sure of that, sir. Have you no teeth? You're allowed to smile. You're permitted to be of good cheer. So says the draining manual who got it from St. Paul. Have you picked him? Yes, sir. He's next door. I'll get him in, sir. What's the matter, Major Scott? Nothing, Jock. Colonel, I prefer to be addressed as Colonel. Colonel? Quite an elaborate do, this. It's a funeral for a field marshal. You never said it was Corporal Fraser. He's my best piper, sir. Did a gift. There's no one listening to the orders, then. After the ceremony itself, sir. Thank you, Captain Simpson. Uh, thank you, Eric. Corporal. Sir. You're the picked piper. Sir. Are you married, Corporal? Or single? Single, sir. Colonel. We're short of time. I like to have things out in the open. Oh, for Pete's sake, there's no secret now. Seeing that we've come to an interval, Colonel, I wonder if this isn't too big a show for you're proposing. Objection? Well, it isn't as though Barrow was with us a long while. I mean, he was a good man, all that. But... Oh, of course, it's whatever you think, Colonel. It's right he should have a proper burial, but... But the whole battalion, sir, and the gun carriage... Maybe a more private ceremony would suit better. Surely the circumstances of his death alone. The circumstances of his death? What does that mean? Well, sir, there's been enough talk already. Well, I know it was one of unsound mind. I mean, whichever way you look at it, sir, it was suicide. No, it damn well wasn't. It was something else. What was it, Jimmy? I... Murder. And I may be the murderer. But you are the accomplices. All of you. Except Jimmy here. He served him better than the rest of us put together. Whatever it was, Colonel, Brigade will never permit this sort of a duel. Oh, to hell with Brigade. The way we bury our Colonels is our business, ours alone. Colonel, Major Scott is right. Brigade will never stand for it. Oh, Brigade won't know about it till it's over. Can you not see? Can you not understand? Fifteen years after he left Scotland, he came back to it. Fifteen years after he left this battalion, he came back to it. The battalion that's known as the Friendly One. And you'd grudge him his burial. We'll bury him the way I say we'll bury him. That's an order and that's a fact. Part three, the return to barracks, you mean men. The death, they say, is a victory. The death, they say, is the great triumph. We'll march back to a strong tune. The black bear will pull us together. And Scotland the brave and the mother's pipe major. Cock of the North, sir. Uh, Yon's a cheesy tune. You'll no play that. You'll no have Charlie as me darling either. Instead, the gathering of Lochiel. We'll have all the tunes of glory to remember them more clearly. Sure we will. Back along the high street, Bridge Road, and Stuart Road. We'll have the quick marches, the head in the air, Horro and Nut Brown Maiden, and the bonnets of Bonnie Dundee. The marching must be perfect, Mr. Riddick. All the people will be watching. 
Geh hier. Perfekt. And when you and I are long for God, they'll say you should have heard them playing. You should have seen them marching then. And it'll snow again. But it'll no break till after the parade. When we come back from the hill, it'll be bitter cold. And a wee bit misty, maybe. And pink over the roofs. I see it fine. Aprons over the kilts, and the naft purple of the drapes over the kettle drums. Just the drums. The whole battalion coming home. The whole battalion of us at the slow pace. Just the four kettle drums beating, rapping with a die. Did it die? Did it die? Did it? Hi, Colonel. It'll be done exactly as you said. <laughs> Jock. Jock, old chum. You're all right, buddy. Come on, keep the heat. Oh, for Pete's sake, I'm bashed. No, no, you'll be fine. Bye. Oh, my babies. Take me home. <laughs> <laughs> 